blow off, aren't they? Okay, so from not the center, but or not but the origin, but our center, we're going to go one, two, three to the right, put a point there. We'll go one, two, three to the left, put a point there. We'll go up four, and we'll go down four, all based around our center. That's the worst ellipse I've ever done in my life. Yeah. Looks like an egg. Here's your egg. That looks like a circle. Well, I'll just make the points bigger and like cheat a little bit. Looks like that water. It's because my graph is sucky. Sorry, my bad. Oh, that's the graph. Yeah, it's the graph. <laughs> it's, it's not. Oh, is it me? <laughs> Too bad I drank today. Man, my goodness, shouldn't have had that bottle of water on the way to work. <laughs> Driving the car going tonight. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Anyway, I want you to try one on your own. Let's go ahead and do this one. Make sure you are able to find the center. Make sure you're able to find the x and the y direction for your ellipses. Be able to determine that it is an ellipse and graph the thing correctly. This thing right now. That's right. Not messing around today. <laughs> oh, it's cold. Don't bag on my grass. I still have grades to give. I'm the grader. You can't be unfair. <laughs> oh, yes, I can be unfair. <laughs> yes, I literally can. You're recording this. Yes. <laughs> so I, said, can I can tell you right now, I can be unfair. <laughs> that's, that's no, I probably scary. won't be unfair. But go ahead and finish up your graphs here. I do want good graphs. By the way, graph paper will really help you because you're able to count on graph paper those little dots. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, why don't you tell me, where is someone on the right-hand side of the room? Where is our center at, please? Center. 4, negative 1. 4, negative 1. How we got that? Minus means to the right 4. Plus means down 1. So we have right here 4, comma, negative 1. Raise your hand if you got 4, negative 1. Very good. We plot that on our graph first, and then we use the distance spread along x and the distance spread along y to draw our lips. So 4, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, down negative 1. How much are we going to go to the right and left? Is it 25, 5, 7, or 49? How much? 25. Sure. Plus or minus 5 in, in, in either direction here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's along our x direction. Associated with x, that's how we find that number. And along the y, we should get 7 out of that. We're taking the square root of those numbers in the bottom of our fraction. We get 7, 1, 2. That 
better. <laughs> Not much better, but a little bit, a little bit better. <laughs> Would you raise your hand if you feel okay with these ellipses? Do you understand that the concept of the difference between circles and ellipses? Mm -hmm. All right. Do you understand how to find the center of any circle or ellipse? Good. And now you can find the x direction and the y direction as, as far as spread goes, and draw that figure. There's one more, one more thing we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about hyperbolas. Say hyperbola with me? Hyperbola. Not hyperbole, all right, we're not talking about exaggeration here, but a hyperbola is a, is a mathematical figure. It, it's not a circle or, or an ellipse. It, it doesn't look even close to those things. It, it's kind of weird. It's like if you took, a, took an ellipse and separated it and blew it up, and it goes like forever. It's crazy looking. It's kind of neat. Here's how a hyperbola looks. There's actually two cases. We'll talk about both cases. Formula for an ellipse in a circle was x squared plus y squared, and, and, and x squared plus y And either whether it was over a number or not, you had this figure. It was kind of a roundish figure, right? You had circles that were had the same numbers and ellipses that had different numbers. But the key here was that they both had pluses. You follow me on that? They both had those pluses. That plus, you can think of, you can be focused up here, the pluses kind of join your circle together, if you want to think about it like that. It says you're all one connected unit. What we're going to have with a hyperbola is not a plus in the middle, but we're going to have a minus. So hyperbola is the only difference between an ellipse and a hyperbola is this. Right now that looks very, very, very similar to an ellipse, doesn't it? That would be an ellipse. That is a hyperbola. So what's the difference between circles and ellipses and hyperbolas? Uh, circles have the same numbers on them. Okay, circles have the same numbers, ellipses don't. But what I mean is you're going to categorize things as circles, ellipses, or hyperbolas. What's the difference between circles, ellipses, and hyperbolas? Minus. The minus. That's it. The, the circles and ellipses have that, that plus. The hyperbolas don't. Now, you don't even know what they look like, but hopefully right now you can identify the difference form formulaically. I don't think that's a word, I just made it up. Uh, between, <laughs> between circles and ellipses and hyperbolas. Can you do that? If it's got a minus, it's a hyperbola. Now, how hyperbolas look? It's like that. Or. about like that. What's the difference? Well, if we have x squared minus y squared, what's coming first, x or y? In our formula, what comes first? X. The x. <laughs> that means we're going to be spreading out along the x direction. So if you start with x, you're going to be going in the x direction. Is that clear for you? Mm -hmm. What do you think this one's going to start with? Y. It's going to be y. So if I switch those around, notice how addition's commutative, right? Mm -hmm. Subtraction's not. If I switch around these, it really doesn't make a difference because whatever comes first, you're adding it. Who cares? Like 5 plus 7, same as 7 plus 5. But subtraction, if I switch those around, I should have a completely different figure, and that's exactly what I get. So x squared minus y squared, x direction. If I do y squared, minus x squared, notice how the b goes along and the a goes along with those x and y's respectively, I'm now going to get spread out in the y direction. Do you guys see the difference and can understand these formulas? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. So x comes first, this way. y comes first, this way. The b's and the a's, they go along with the x and the y's. Now what do those b's and those a's stand for? Well, this is kind of cool. What letter is a associated with, the x or the y? 
That means that this right here, just like an ellipse, just like it, it's going to give you the negative A and the A. It's going to tell you where those things cross the x-axis just like this did. By the way, where's the center for this hyperbola? Zero, zero. Yeah, and that's what we're really going to deal with in this class is center to zero, zero. Could you do it, switch, uh, shifting it around? Uh, of course, it works just like the ellipses and the circles. You can shift those just like you normally would. We're going to probably stick to center to zero, zero, okay? Centered at zero, zero. The x-intercepts are given by plus or minus a for this one. Are there any y-intercepts in this graph? No. Are there any y-intercepts in this graph? That's yeah. interesting, isn't it? That's interesting. It, it says x squared comes first, we're spreading on x direction, there will be x-intercepts, but there's not going to be any y-intercepts. Weird. Now this has the same center, of course we're centered around 0, 0. And our y-intercepts are going to be given by b and negative b, again, very, very much like an ellipse. You look under that, that y, since we know it's spreading out along the y-axis, you're going to have some y-intercepts. There's no x-intercepts. So we've got our two cases. We have x coming first, x direction. y coming first, y direction. In our x direction, we're going to have x intercepts, but not y. In our y direction, we'll have y intercepts, but not x. Those numbers are still found exactly the same way that you do your ellipse. So we'll give you spread along the x and spread along your y, respectively. Raise your hand if you feel okay with our hyperbola so far. Let's try maybe two examples. I'll recap everything in a nice little chart for you. And then we'll be done with our, our section here. Now the first thing you need to do, of course, is figure out whether you have parabola, circle, ellipse, hyperbola. Those are the four figures we've got. Those are our conic sections. So is it a parabola? That's a silly question, right? It doesn't look anything like a parabola. Is it a circle? No. Why not? Two reasons. Firstly, numbers are different, right? Secondly, circles have pluses. Is it an ellipse? No. No, it has the different numbers. It looks very much like an ellipse. But what do ellipses have right here? So this is definitely a hyperbola. If you see a minus and you see the x squared, y squared minus, you got a hyperbola, no matter what. Even if the numbers are the same and you have the minus, you'd have a hyperbola. And that, would, that would work. Now, all we got to be able to do is determine whether we're a horizontally spreading along the x direction or a vertically spreading along the y direction hyperbola, put our little marks, our intercepts to, to what we, we have, and then draw our, our graph.